Hello once again and welcome to the Amalgamated with Christ Church where the purpose statement remains the same and is always the same. If you wake me up, I'm going to tell you the same thing. If I'm just um, driving down the street, you ask me, I'm going to tell you the same thing. Whichever time of the day, and it's ought to be the same thing for you. To bring people back into fellowship with God through Jesus Christ because there is no other way. And so today the focal scripture is Matthew chapter 16, and we read from verses 13 to 20. Matthew 16, verses 13 to 20. And you read, and you go down, and in verse 19, Jesus said, And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The keys. So we want to talk about the keys that Jesus gave the keys that Jesus left us. How are we supposed to use those keys? What's the purpose of those keys? What are those keys? You see, growing up, you always hear people binding this and binding that and people binding the devil. They bind the devil when they're in church and when they go outside, it's the same devil that attacked them and they fall down. To show you that sometimes we use words and we say some things that's not relevant, it's frivolous, it's not even biblical. The only person or the only being that will be able to bind the devil is God himself. God himself. Because if you would bind the devil when you're in church and when you go outside, it's the same devil that causes you to fall flat on your face and sin. So what are you saying? Your bounding wasn't good enough. And so I say, you have to be very careful and know how to use the keys that we were given. Because the scripture tells us about a binding and a loosing. But you have to understand what you can bind and what you can loose. Sometimes people want to bind wealth and lose wealth. People want to bind health and lose, loosen health. People want to do all sorts of stuff these days because it sounds good. And so we gravitate towards what sounds good most time but not what is biblical. Very important, Jesus said, I gave you the keys. Keys, not the key, keys. Because Jesus himself has the master key. And so because Jesus gave us the keys, the first thing you have to know is what is a key. You see, a key. Key is an instrument, it is used to lock, it is used to unlock. In other words, without the keys, you don't have the power to perform certain action. You can't do no locking, you can't do no unlocking. So without the keys, you can't do no binding, you can't do no loosing. The keys also symbolizes authority. Jesus gives you the keys, but he has a master key. So don't believe all the time you're going to be walking around with that key or the keys, shaking it and showing off. I got the keys. I got the keys. No. With those keys, you have to remain loyal to Jesus. You have to stay plugged in in order for you to use those keys. Jesus gave us the keys or the authority to act on his behalf, not simply for us to benefit are to sell what we can lock and sell what we can unlock. We see people doing those things today. So today, like in Matthew chapter 16 and 13, what does the scripture say? Let's do read that first. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Notice he asks a very pertinent question. And we are in a society similar today to Caesarea Philippi. What was in Caesarea Philippi? Caesarea Philippi was a lush city. It was a prosperous city. When you walk in the architecture, it was breathtaking. It was a city that was thriving. It was a city that the people lacked nothing except the presence of God. 
What they have there in the city of Caesarea Philippi or in that region was a cave, the cave of Pan. The cave of Pan, they say that was the entrance to the gateways to hell, the entrance to the gateways of Hades. That is where the Greeks and most Romans, some of them in that society, they would go and they would seek divination because they want an answer from the dark side. They don't want the answer that is coming from the true and living God. Today we see people living in a very prosperous society. We see people having everything. We see people going about their business, not lacking in anything, but yet they're still in allegiance with the dark side. It's even happening in churches. It is very similar. I said we are a prosperous society. We are full of idolatry because of our love for money. And so because we are full of idolatry, we always want to get more, but we have to have a source from which to get. And that source, if it is illicit, is not from God, so it must be from the dark side. It is similar back in the day when they were in that, that region of Caesarea Philippi, people would want to get stuff, they want to get divination. But scripture warns us in no uncertain terms, all of us who belong to the true and living God to flee from such a path, to not to pursue idolatry. Because I tell you the truth, each and every one of us who do so, who pursue idolatry, one day, one day we're going to fall down. But you're going to understand that you're living in a society that you will be tempted even though Jesus gave you the keys to bind and loose, and we're going to go into that, but you will be tempted. So therefore, the Apostle Paul warned us in no uncertain terms. 1 Corinthians 10, look at verse 12. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. In other words, those of us who are in Christendom, those of us who receive those keys, we will at some times be tempted. But the apostle warned us to stand fast. And he cautioned us that there is no temptation that can overtake you except such as is common to man. But because you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, because God is faithful, God will not allow what is, what is afflicting you. God will not allow what is coming upon you to overtake you. There will always be a way of escape. Sometimes we see the very gates open for us to run through to escape. But we linger, we tarry. We wait, not knowing that we're in a society similar to Caesarea Philippi, not knowing that we're in a society with the entrance of Pan looking at us, the gates of Hades, waiting to unleash on us. And so I say to you, those of us who are in Christendom, you better be careful, take heed, stand fast. God is faithful, but sometimes we want to linger, sometimes we want to wait around, we want to see what's going to happen next. The moment you see the sign, it is written. It is time for you to get away. It is time for you to run away. It is time for you to get out. I don't care even if you're in a church and you're sitting down. The moment you see the preacher gone astray, the moment you see certain frivolous activities taking place in that church, it's time for you to leave. And it's very disturbing you see all these things being shown on social media, shown on television, shown in the print media all over the world. Very, very, very frivolous things taking place. People are doing blood sacrifices, starting from the prick of a finger, and next thing you know, animal sacrifice, and then human sacrifice, right there in the church. And it's normalized. And I say the gates of Hades has been unleashed against some people who have not the, not the fortitude to run away when they see. The apostle said that you will always have a way of escape. But do you want to escape or do you want to wait around? Do you want to linger to see whether or not you are going to be able to bear it? The apostle said way of escape. 
that you may be able to bear it. God, in other words, is not going to present unto you and to give you much more than you can manage. The scripture says, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. So you're saying, but pastor, I'm going through some things and it's very tough. But you're still here today. You're able to identify that it is tough. You're able to identify what is going on within your life. And so you have the sense and you have, the, you, have, you have God who is saying, listen, I am here and I will give you, I will support you and I will, uh, I will uh, enable you to handle it. The scripture tells you in no uncertain terms that when you're going through trials of many kind, remember that the testing of your faith, it's, uh, the testing of your faith, it brings forth, it brings something out to you when you're going through. It brings for some fruits that is dormant or, or inside of you that needs a little rekindling. And one of those fruits is patience because if you hang on, if you wait, though you're being tempted, though you're being tested, though you're in the gates and you're looking, you will be able to divert, you'll be able to walk away. You will not yield to temptation. The church today must stand tall in the midst of this debacle. The church today cannot afford to lose its savor because Jesus has established the church in the midst and the middle, right there in a very paganistic state. The, the gates of hell, Caesarea Philippi. Look, let's look where Jesus, what, what Jesus did. Matthew chapter 16 and look at verse 12. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of, to, to beware of the leavened bread. Not the, the leavens that you put in bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. What am I saying? In the middle of a paganistic culture, today we see a sort of preaching that is providing leavening to the sermons, leveling to the word of God, to smooth it out because not everyone can tolerate the word undiluted so they want a little leavening so jesus is saying beware of that today the church the church is in the midst of a paganistic culture again and again like the like there in caesarea philippi leaven once again meaning the words that's coming from some preachers today as it was coming from the pharisees and the scribe back then now today the leavening is coming from preachers that see the word as a mean to gain that see the word as something to make you feel cozy and many of us want that little cozy preaching that little cozy teaching that little patting of your patting on your head sort of deal but you better be careful of a leaven sermon you better be careful of a sermon that is watered down because when you are going through the trials of many kind if you're not if you're not if you're if you're not established if you're not fed the true word from the true and living god you will not be able to stand again what is coming against you and so I'm saying to you, Jesus tell them to be aware of that sort of doctrine. And so today I'm saying many churches are reflective of that paganistic culture. They produce to you a sort of doctrine that has nothing to do with the word of God. Many of them say that the word has evolved. The word of God cannot change. Many of them said the word has to fit the time. The only thing that I know change is the mode of delivery. Man, man may not be riding on donkeys and horses from state to state and city to city anymore to preach the word. Sometimes you don't even have to jump on an airplane to fly to any countries to preach the word. You stand up and the mode that we're using now is transmission. People can see it live. You have so many different means to, pre to, pre to, to present the word and to be effective. Go forth into all the world. Teach all men. Teach everyone. Teach them the word of God. You can do that today from the comfort of wherever you want to do it. You can be on a beach. And you can teach the word to millions of people. You can be in a sanctuary, a pseudo sanctuary such as we are. And you can preach the word to millions of people. So you be ready to be careful. That the source that you're getting, you're, you're, you're feeding from, the source that is coming to you is not from a paganistic sort of a society. And so you have, to, you have to be plugged in because God gave you the keys. We're going to look at that very careful. And so we're going down towards it. 
Uh, but I want you to, to, to pay attention to this portion of scripture. Psalm 119. I say you're living in a society that they will provide a sort of leaven teaching. A sort of teaching that will water down the word. Sometimes you would want it to water down too. To fit your narrative. Because sometimes you're doing something that is not of God. And because it's not of God, the word of God, if it comes to you straight, is going to rebuke you. The word of God, if it comes to you straight, it's going to offer you correction. The word of God, if it comes to you straight, is going to tear you up. But sometimes you don't want that. You want a preacher to be gentle with you. No, 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 no. I'm not going to be gentle because it's not my word. I am just a servant of the true and living God. And I am going to preach, thus say the Lord. And so in order for you not to be inundated are to be overcome with this leavening sort of sermon that Jesus warned us against. You have to do this. Psalm 119 verse 34 says, Give me understanding and I shall keep your laws. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. In other words, in other words, in other words, you're asking the true and living God to give you an understanding, to give you wisdom, to give you knowledge, which are all spiritual gifts. These things only come from God and when God give it to you, you will be able to break the word down you'll be able to digest the word you'll be able to understand the word some may say some may say some may say well 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 it sounds good but it's hard to do no Jesus gave us the authority. Jesus gave us the keys in the middle of a paganistic society Jesus did not think it was going to be simple Jesus did not take the disciples and bring them in a lush part of town and say, hey, listen, this is where you should stay. This is where you should reside. Hide. Don't go out in the world. Don't preach. Just hide. No. Jesus gave you the authority in the midst of a society that needs cleansing. It needs cleansing. But to use the keys that Jesus gave, you have to know who Jesus is. And that's a problem. Many of us have lost our identity because we have never been established with the true one living God, the Son of God, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Jesus said it right here. Matthew 16, verse 13. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, is? Because when Jesus asked the question at first, then listen to them. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah Others say Jeremiah are one of the prophets. You see a lot of speculation going on today. Just back then. A lot of speculation. Society speculate on who Jesus is. But who do you say he is? People like miracles. People like to see deeds. And so churches are crowded when someone comes into town telling them that they're going to give prophecies. Giving prophecies a dime a dozen. Keeping a prophetic convention. As if the word of prophecy is something that is just frivolous. You cannot produce prophecy unless it's given to you by the Holy Spirit. By the will of the Holy Spirit. Not because you feel like you want to prophesy today. And most of these prophets, they profit nothing but prosperity. Nothing but good things. On that prophetic convention, you have like 50,000 people and everyone lining up, going up to get a prophecy about money. Get a prophecy about relationship. Get a prophecy about a new car. Get a prophecy about a new house. Get a prophecy about a vacation. Get a prophecy about a job promotion. Get everything except a warning from God. And when we see prophecy coming from God, usually it's associated with warning. You see, when they speculate right here and say, some say, look at the names that they call John the Baptist and Elijah. I don't say Jeremiah. Don't you see that John the Baptist and Jeremiah, all they did was come and give you warning. And they say, oh, some say that you are Elijah. These are the one who, these are the one who love to see deeds, love to see miracles. Because the man Elijah was a prophet who did a lot of miracles. If you go into 1 Kings chapter 17, you can see what Elijah, you can see some of the things that Elijah gave. So there was a comparison, there was a speculation as to who Jesus was. So Jesus asked, who do you say I am? In other words, church people, who is Jesus? 
Who do you say Jesus is today? You proclaim that he gave you keys. You proclaim that he gave you authority to bind. You proclaim that he gave you authority to loose. You proclaim that you have authority to open and shut. And I say to you, you're using the keys frivolously. You're using the keys very wrong because what you're binding, what you're loosing, what you're opening, what you're shutting is not, is not what you're supposed to do. You're not what we're supposed to do. Matthew 16, 19, when you know Jesus, when you know Jesus, this is what happened now. I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The keys represent authority. The keys represent authority. And this authority is given to each and every one of us who have repented from our sins. The authority to use the keys is not given to each and anyone, but rather is given to those of us who have repented and who have a relationship with him. When you repent, when you have a relationship you know who he is so when jesus says who but who not forget what society say but who do you say i am for you to confess jesus christ as lord and savior there must be some repenting acts chapter 3 verse uh, 19 says repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the lord you will not receive any times of refreshing from god unless you belong to him so therefore when you are refreshed then you receive the keys the keys that jesus gives the keys are what the believers use based on the authority of Jesus Christ. The keys are the, uh, the keys that Jesus gave. This is what you do with the keys. You have now the authority to admit to admit people into heaven. I'm going to tell you the reason I say that. You have to admit but you do not have the authority to determine who get in. And I'll explain that. Jesus says right here and I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven. The keys. So you open the door. In other words, you have the ability now to introduce people, to lead people into the kingdom of heaven. How are you going to do that? Because you're going to produce the word of God to them. You're going to produce the gospel. You're not going to use the keys to open no frivolous doors. The keys are supposed to lead people to show man the way. Because man, as we stand in our sinful state, we are locked out. And unless we have the keys that come from Jesus Christ, you will not be able to open any doors. The keys are the word of God that give us wisdom. That so we can use that wisdom to lead people. Not everyone has the keys that Jesus gives, so beware. Because some people are talking about all sorts of things with all sorts of keys. And they have no gospel in them. They are not producing anything to show you the way. You are forever locked out though you are in church, you know. And though you are in church, you are never yet convicted. And so there is no admitting into the kingdom of heaven for you. Because you're still locked out in darkness. Because you go in such a congregation and they're going to tell you that, listen, the word of God has evolved. You can live in your sinful state. The word of God has evolved. You can continue to, do, to, to be an homosexual. You can continue into fornication. You can continue into stealing as long as you come to church. No. You're still locked out. They have not received the keys that Jesus gave. Jesus didn't give, give them any keys. Because the keys of God is used to open the doors of heaven. Jesus said, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Notice, the key is a tool to open. The key is a tool to admit. The key is authority. It symbolizes authority. Jesus gave you authority to do such. But not many people have the keys that Jesus gave. And so they are leading people astray. They still have people locked out of the kingdom. And so Jesus is a warning to some people back then, and it's still relevant to us today in today's day principle. Look at Luke 11, verse 52. Jesus says, Woe to you lawyers, for you have taken away the keys of knowledge. You did not enter in yourself, and those who were entering in you hindered. Some preachers, they are legalistic. Jesus is saying, Woe to you. You've taken away the keys of knowledge. You are no longer introducing them to the gospel of Christ. 
You're no longer introducing them to what can bring them salvation, which is the gospel. You're no longer introducing them to this thing that is called eternal life by the way you live, by the way you testify. You're no longer doing so. Instead, what are you doing? Because you're preaching 11 sermon. You're preaching a sermon that is corrupted. What did you do? You take away the knowledge, the knowledge of God. Because you're preaching something that is not of God. You're preaching something that is only to suit your narrative. Something to get you rich. Something to get them rich. Because you're now associated with the dark side. And so Jesus says, woe to you lawyers. For you have taken away the keys of knowledge. You did not enter in yourself. In other words, they have not even used the keys to open the door. Because they themselves have not received any salvation. They themselves have not repented of what they are doing. The keys are the authority of Jesus as the ability to bind and to loose. And that is the part that many people are confused with. The binding and the loosing. Look at Matthew 16 again. Look at 19. And I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind and hurt will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven the keys are the authority of jesus has the ability to loose and to bind many believe this is binding as we said earlier and loosing things loosing up money loosing up everything loosing up sickness so they go around and they're preaching and they're healing everyone Everybody come across here laying on hands and say they're healing. Binding sickness. Binding amputation. The man already lost his leg. Binding diabetes. But yet still when he go home, his blood sugar is, is through the roof. Binding asthma. But the person is still smoking. Binding liver disease. The person is still an alcoholic. So don't you see wrong use of keys? Because the Keys, the important part, the important part you to understand is that the keys are supposed to open the door to the kingdom of heaven. The keys is the kingdom to the kingdom is the authority of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ himself has the master key. And because he has the master key and we belong to him and we are his representative here on earth, then guess what? He gave us a copy, not the master key, but some people copy the key that Jesus gave. I said, Jesus of the master key. Listen, Isaiah 22, verse 22. The keys of the house of David, I will lay on his shoulder on Jesus, and so he shall open, and no one shall shut. And he shall shut, and no one shall open. When Jesus come, when Jesus came, rather, when Jesus was here on earth, he gave mankind the opportunity to repent. He opened the door. Open us. Open the door. No longer you have to wait and sacrifices and to do all that. Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. He already opened that door. And so we are privy to go through, but we have to belong to him. He will not give you the keys unless he know you. And because you are not known by him and you have a key, don't be selfish with the keys that Jesus gave you. Your job is not to open the door for someone else that is in darkness. Open the door for someone else that is locked out. People go around and talk about they preach and teach and rebuke, correct and exhort. And when people, and when people, some people don't respond the way they want them to. Sometimes when they're soliciting money, they call brimstone and fire on those people. They put a curse on those people. That's because they received the keys from the dark side. But I tell you the truth. When you use the keys that Jesus gives you, which is the authority, and you go forth in all the world and you preach and you teach and you, 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 you show man that, listen, man, this is where you're headed. This is the way to salvation. Because guess what? We are all bound up in sin, so we need some loosening. And the only way we're going to be loose is unless someone present the keys 
the keys to the kingdom of heaven via the gospel and to present to you the message of salvation and then you will be freed. You will be loosed from your chains. You will be loosed from the oppression of sin. So that is the loosening that the scripture is talking about. Where do you get that from, preacher man? I say look at Romans 6 and verse 20. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What is that saying? When you were bound up in sin, you were free from the knowledge of righteousness in other words you are blind you can go about doing everything that you can you want to do you want to do fornication you're free to do it because you're bound up in sin no one has loosened you so everything looks normal and many in society today they are bound up in sin they need a little loosening so you don't go to someone that is deep in sin and telling that you you lose generation you you lose generational curse over them they're still in sin you lose, I lose the powers of diabetes over you. They're still eating sweet stuff. I lose this, I lose that, I bind this. I, no, you're doing it wrong. The words that you use, the gospel, the scripture, everything must be lined up to lead man to salvation. That is the key. That is the key. So people can be all there, all you want, standing in that congregation. You can be binding sickness, loosing sickness, you know, loosing, I mean, health, all the thing. But unless they accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they are still bound. Because they're not going through that gate. They're not going into the kingdom of heaven. So I want to say this to you. When you go and you use the key, the authority that Jesus gives you, and you deliver the, deliver the word of God, Whoever hear it, whoever hear it, whoever hear that, whoever hear that message of salvation, once they have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, guess what? You have just opened the doors to the kingdom of heaven for them. And that's what the key is. So you can preach, but if someone ignore the gospel, and this is where the binding comes, this is where the binding, if they ignore the gospel, they don't want to be loose to go through. Guess what? They are bound in sin. And they will be bound here on earth. Bound in sin. No, no heavenly bound. For, no, 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 not going through no gates for them. So when Jesus gives you the keys to loose and to bind. The binding and the loosing is not believers to determine. It's not the authorities for believers to determine who is going to heaven, who is going to get saved. Rather, it's for believers to deliver the message of salvation that will open the doors, open the kingdom of heaven for people to walk in because then they will be delivered from sin because they hear the word, they shake off the shackles of sin, they shake off adultery, they shake off fornication, they shake off homosexuality, they shake off stealing, they shake off lying, they shake on everything that is not of God. Shake it off. And then they will enter in. They have a, they're on their way. They got a foot in. They got a foot in because you just open the door and introduce them to it. And so guess what? That's the reason Jesus gave the keys in the middle of a paganistic society. Because people were in bondage. So when you hear about binding and loosing, it's not talking about binding up money, loosing up money. It's not talking about those things. People like to flip the word of God. To speak about frivolous things. It's talking about opening the doors every time you open your mouth. Every time, you, every time you, you present a testimony to someone. Every time you share the gospel, whether by the way you live, whether by how you speak to them. Any which way, you're using the keys that the master gives you to open the kingdom of heaven. And people who do not want to accept it, people do, who do not want to listen to you, guess what? They are bound. And so that's what it means. And you see, many people, many people won't get into the kingdom of heaven, you know. Because when they hear, the, 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 when, when they have heard the message of salvation, they refuse it. The door was open to them. The door is open for a short while. I say a short while because each and every one of us, one day, we will die. And after death comes the judgment. So with the keys of the kingdom of heaven, you declare the word of God. And this declaration will open the open 
open the door, open the kingdoms for them to, the kingdom for them to walk in. So who receive the word of God, they are loose from sin. Who reject the word of God, they are bound up in their sin. And that's what happened with the keys. And I gave you an example. And it's happening in church. Many people are in church today. And it goes back to Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5. And this is an example of someone that was born in their sin on earth. Look at verse 3. You can read the story, but look at verse 3. But Peter said, Ananias, why a Satan failure art to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? You see, because you have the authority of God, you can speak and you can declare when something is not of God. And when you declare that it's not of God, you already bind it right there. Because it's not going to the kingdom of heaven because it's not of God. Amen. Yeah. So a believer now received the keys that Jesus gave. And, he's, and it was given to him in the presence of evil. Because you're going to be inundated with evil in this society. Matthew 16 and look at verse 18. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of A.D. shall never prevail against it. Jesus did not take them to some little secret place. Jesus did not take them and lock them in a closet and whispering in their ears, I'm going to give you the keys right here. Don't use it. Don't let nobody see it. No. Jesus gave them the keys in the middle of a paganistic society. In other words, when you receive the keys, you have an assignment because you have the authority. And you better be careful what you do with those keys. You better be careful what you do with the authority that Jesus gives you. The wrong use of God's authority will result in wrong consequences. Jesus gave the keys to bind and loose. You cannot act how you feel with those keys. Not because you don't like that person. You're going to hold back the gospel from the person. Not because the person may offend your grandmother 50 years ago. When you see them come in church, you're not going to talk to them. I'm not going to preach anything today. I'm just going home. Wrong use of the keys. When you receive the keys to bind and lose, there's no self-praise. There's no pride. There's no special privilege. So you can't only decide you're going to open doors for your family members. In other words, you're only going to whisper in their ears, this is salvation. This is salvation. People outside, you don't care about because you're not your blood relative. Wrong use of the keys. The power of the keys to the kingdom of heaven requires for us to observe a certain stewardship with God. Certain stewardship with the gospel. You cannot go around and do as you feel fit. Because those keys were given for you to use, to open, to open, to open the kingdom of heaven. And because you were given those keys, if you use it wrong... It's going to be taken away. In other words, the authority that you receive to preach the gospel. The authority that you receive to preach on behalf of Jesus Christ. We're not using those keys wrong. You're not doing anything for God anymore. Because God cannot look and sin. God has, no, God has no, nothing to do with sin. God is not a part of sin. So any man standing in the pulpit declaring that they are from God. And they're preaching things that is not of God. They cannot be called. Society may call them a pastor. But guess what? They are not in the sight of God. Society may say that he's an evangelist. But guess what? He is not so in the sight of God. Society may say he's a teacher of the gospel. But guess what? He is not so in the sight of God. And why is that? Because Jesus himself, he gave. He gave unto some. He gave unto them. And all those offices... We're part of the are part of the fivefold ministry. I like to say prophets and apostles. There were then because the church was built on the foundation of the prophets and the apostles. So people go around every day and as I like to say, prophesying. Because they receive a word of prophecy. They're not no prophet. The prophet and the apostle were already here. They wrote the scriptures. 
They wrote it down for us so we can read it. But people like titles, fancy titles. They don't read the scriptures. They don't read this. And so they do not, they do not, they do not understand the authority that they have. But Jesus, Jesus gave us those keys and Paul reinforced that we are supposed to be short. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and, and stewards of the mysteries of God. Meaning the teaching of Christ. The teaching of Christ that is the mystery of God because a lot of people don't understand this. And that's the reason you have to use the keys to loose, to open the doors to the kingdom of heaven because Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way to the kingdom of heaven. And so we as stewards of the authority... To preach and to preach and to teach the mysteries of God. And I said to you, be very careful because there's no special privilege. With the keys, you have the authority of the kingdom. You have the authority of heaven because you belong to him, the one you sent you. You belong to God. And so because you are going to use the keys as a good steward, as a good servant, many in society won't like you. Because you're going to denounce all slackness. And you're going to preach against things that is not of God. You're going to see things and you cannot sit down and say, mm -mm -mm -mm. That's when you have to bind those things up in the name of Jesus because you're going to condemn it. Oh, no, 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 no. That is not of God and you condemn it. You condemn it because it's not of God and so they don't like you. They say you come to destroy it. Yes, you have to. Because you have the keys to bind and to loose. And you ain't going to loose anything that is filled with iniquity. And so the Apostle Paul says right here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame. You see what I'm telling you? When you renounce the hidden things of shame, you bind that. Not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully. But by manifestation of the truth, condemning all. Always have to every man conscience in the eyes of God. So listen, when you bind it, they're going to say, oh, oh, look at him. He's trying to destroy all this thing. He's trying to tell them not to sow any seeds anymore. And so they hate you. When you tell them that the preaching and the binding and loose is not about binding up and loosening money in their pockets. They get upset with you, but that's okay. But that's okay. Jesus Christ said this. Look at this now. John 15. John 15. Jesus said it. So, 18. If the world hates you, know that it hates me before it hated you. So when Jesus came and Jesus was here, Jesus did a lot of loosening because he showed man, this is the way. I am the way. I am the truth. No one goes to the Father but through me. Jesus said our words saying, listen, gates of heaven is open right here. But when Jesus condemned, when Jesus rebuked, when Jesus exposed, he bound it up. And so they hate him. So Jesus says, if the world hates you, believe me, they hate me first. So it's no big deal. And so when you're using the keys appropriately, man, they're going to hate you. They're not going to like you because who are you to come and tell them that you can't sing on the choir if you're deep into fornication? Who are them? Who are you to come and tell that what you're playing in the church should not be played in the church? Who are you? Who are you? Where do you come from? Do you see you're destroying what the young people has created? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? No, you're binding the things that's not of God because you're, you're, you're denouncing it. The scripture says you denounce the hidden things of shame. You denounce the hidden things of shame. With the keys to the kingdom of heaven, you must be very, very, very careful knowing that you've been entrusted with an eye office. And because you've been entrusted with an eye office, you cannot show favoritism. And because you cannot show favoritism, many people are going to be against you. But it's okay. Listen, Jesus said this in Matthew 10, verse 34. Do not think that I came to peace and unhurt. I did not come to bring peace on earth, but a sword. Why is it a sword? Because you're binding and loosening in the name of Jesus. And you're not loosening any money because that's just frivolous talk. That is frivolous talk. But they're going to say, but preacher, it says that whatsoever you, what was Jesus talking about? Look at the context of the scripture. 
You see, people like to verse pluck. Whatsoever. Don't you see that Jesus was in the middle of Caesarea Philippi? Don't you see that those people were rich, luxurious? Go and research Caesarea Philippi. They did not need no man to come and, to come and loosen up any wealth on them. It was the Romans and the Greeks. They did not need no, no little fishermen and no little, and no little men and tax collectors to come and lose. It was, it, it was a province that was rich, that was wealthy. So why would Jesus go and tell them, listen, go lose some money. And these, they already had money. Jesus don't tell them, that was not the intent. Go and read the scripture. Jesus built on the rock. On this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Listen, the gates of Hades, listen, look at, look at it very carefully. Caesarea Philippi, very rich, very wealthy. Don't need no little men to come and tell them about prosperity. They had it all. Jesus went there, created a church, the, the church, the first church right there. Right there, Jesus gave the authority. The church was formed right there. And the job of the church in that paganistic society was to bind and to loose Bind and to loose. What was it? What was it that need binding right there and loosing? Sin. Sin need to be bound up. Man that was in sin need to be loosened. So they, they can enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so the power of the keys to the kingdom of heaven requires us, as I said, to observe good stewardship. Many will hate you when you're using the keys appropriately. And many will come up against you, even members of your, of your own household. And so some people turn to people with camouflage keys. People with camouflage keys running around these days, proclaiming certain gospel. Always having a, a, having a, a, a prophetic convention. Prophetic convention and you have to pay to get in. Always having these sort of, kind of camouflage keys. Those keys were first given to them by their master, the deceitful one, Satan, the dragon, the devil. Where did you get that from? All right, let's go to the scripture to show you everything that we're talking about. Look, Revelation chapter 12. Look at verse 9. What did verse 9 say? So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole earth. The whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Satan was cast down. Jesus is here. Giving us and he gave us the right keys. When Satan come down, Jesus said, Oh, a lot of these people love this prosperity thing. I'm going to give my servants some keys to go and open some door. What did the scripture say? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter, thir um, chapter 11. Verse 13, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transformed himself into an angel of light. Listen to this very carefully, fake keys people. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their works. They have camouflage keys. They open the doors of prosperity preaching because people like that start of stuff. People like signs and wonders and healing. So that's the reason when Jesus says, who do men say I am? And they were saying, well, some say you're Jeremiah. Well, some say that you're Elijah. Well, some say that you're John the Baptist. A whole lot of speculating. They called out the two prophets that like to give prophecy. And one that had a whole lot of miraculous deeds. And so today we see men chasing down. The fastest way to fill up a church house is to go and proclaim that a prophet is coming to town today. Come and hear what the Lord has in store for you. And everybody is filling up there. When they fill up there, the prophet gives them nothing but prosperity. I was at a church once. In Miami and I heard that this prophet was coming and so I was there and the prophet was going around and prophesying to everybody laying on hands and people falling over because everybody was getting rich from the prophet you know prophet prophesying them money and I remember the prophet even say to the false prophet the prophet even say 
to, to the, the congregation, come on up, bring whatever you have, lay it on the stage. Because he was prophesying to the pastor early. I saw this for myself. I don't need nobody to tell me any stories. The false prophet said to the pastor, by the end of the night, you'll be walking on money. <coughs> so he said, come on up. And people running in start from the highest denominator all the way down to bring whatever you have. And then he said to the pastor, get up and walk on the money. And the pastor get up and was running and dancing on the money. So this, this thing about dancing and money, it's not strange. It's not new, I should say. I've seen it with my own eyes. And I was waiting for the prophet because I was broke. So I was waiting for the prophet to come and give me some prophecy. To tell me how I'm going to be rich. And all night that, prophet, that, that, that false prophet avoided me. Every time he go over there, I walk right in front of him. And he'll pretend like he don't see me. And go around. Every time the prophet, and I would just be, and the false prophet never prophesy anything to me. <coughs> I remember the, 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 the bishop who was in cahoots with him, I should say. Because he knew that was wrong. Was saying to me, did the prophet prophesy to you? And I'm like, no. <laughs> it was strange to him. But I tell you this. That's why I tell you, be very careful. The scripture says, deceitful workers. They are not no apostles of Jesus Christ. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. I'm going to show you that. And he himself gave some to be apostles and prophets. Jesus gave some to be apostles and prophets. Right? And evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. Some people don't like this, but this is true. The apostles and prophets, listen. Go into Ephesians chapter 2 and look at verse 20. It says, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. I don't know how many foundations your church got. But this is clearly telling you that the foundation of the church was built on the apostles and the prophets. It's already been done. That's the reason Jesus gave them the keys. Right then and there. And those keys are handed down to us now who belong to him. Once you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But I say to you today, the further you are from Jesus, the more you will be tempted to take fake keys. The more you will be tempted to go and listen to some of those false prophets prophesying things that, that they are not of God. Therefore, it's no great thing if his ministers also transform. Transform. Into ministers of righteousness. Transform into people that come and they prophesy to you every single day. That's the reason. It's, the scripture says it's no great thing. It's no great thing. It's no great thing. It's no, it's no, therefore it's no great thing, the scripture says. That's the reason they can go on social media. They're always prophesying night and day. Sometimes they come on like two, they have two shows. Two shows and they always have their WhatsApp or their Zell now these days. They always have their WhatsApp and their cash app and whatever to take money, to siphon money off of you. And people typing in, man of God, woman of God, I am sick, pray for me, I can see you, I can feel you. No, you're lying. You're lying. Because you have false keys. Your keys don't work. Your keys. You notice these apostles and these prophets. They are not leading anyone into, in, 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 into the path. They are, not, they are not telling anyone that they should repent of their sinful deeds. They are always going, I'm coming into town. All who need healing and everybody run. Because all of us need a little healing, you know. How many times have you gone to some false prophet and they tell you that you're healed and you're still having aches and pain? How many times? They're always doing some frivolous things. Let me see them grow a leg back. Jesus Christ, give us the keys. And miracles are not impossible. I'm not discounting that. I'm just saying you better be wise. You better be wise. That's all I'm saying. Because not everybody who are waving keys, look at their keys very carefully. Some of them keys look suspicious. You can see it a mile apart. You better look. The keys that Jesus gave are powerful. 
It's powerful. It will be an earth as in heaven when those keys are used. What is in heaven? God's program is in heaven. Righteousness and holiness, that's what's in heaven. That's what resides in heaven. When the keys to the kingdom of heaven are used to open the doors of heaven for those of us who are bound in darkness, the those of us who are bound in iniquity, we have a glimpse. Now it's for you to enter in. It's now for you to hear well done, thou good and faithful servant, because you continue the path. But when you hear the words of God, brothers and sisters, when you preach, when you, when you live your life as a living sacrifice, whether just by living and you know you are showing them, you know your lifestyle is a testimony unto them, you have no authority. You have no authority. You have, no, you have nothing, nothing, nothing on you. you. You will not be held accountable. Because you have really done your job. You have used the keys to show them this is the way. But they have refused to enter in. So guess what? They are just bound up in sin. Right here and hurt. And so brothers and sisters, those of you who are bound in sin. It's time for you to understand that the keys. The keys to the kingdom of heaven. Are being used today. This message is being preached. This message is going forth. The keys to the kingdom of heaven. It's being used. So I say to you, enter in. It is open. In Jesus' name, amen.